What is up guys and welcome back. Here we are with the common turn turn in January of 1940. And boy do I have a doozy plan for you. So at the end of that German turn we did declare war on Germany. So this will be my mobilize the reserves turn and mobilize the reserves we will. We've got some combat for you and uh, I think it's going to be a good one. But to start off here we have two peacetime income increase rolls, one for a sleeping bear and one because the Germans now own a new territory next to Russian home country. Actually, now that I think about it, they also got Lapland up there in Finland, so we'll actually have 3d12. And we're looking for a 12 here because we're at 34 out of 46. Oh my gosh, I got exactly 12. Or, no, that's 13. Math is hard, guys. Either way, I tried to miss, but I couldn't despite myself. So we will go up 12 to our 46. And while we're over here, we can now take this away and go up to 54 for our total income. No more of that confusing non-home country IPP stuff. Okay, now let's do our tech. We are going for the same, well, I guess not the same six because we only have five tech rolls now, uh, but the same five that we've been working on, artillery, mechs, Long range aircraft, improved factories, and improved construction. They're all established. Oh my god, look at that, guys. We got four out of five. And of course, the only one we missed, just like Cat or Cow, was the only one that we wanted improved factories. But we got everything else, so I guess I should be happy. This is the best rule that I've had in quite a long time. Look at that, four out of five. I did consider trying for the tech objective again, but I guess I should have, because those are some high numbers. Two 12s and 11 and an eight. Okay, let's go on to our mobilize the reserves purchase and look at that. Not very diverse, but impactful indeed. CCP will be buying nothing. We've got an international brigade as per usual. We're going to buy two tank destroyers and out there at a balmy four IPPs per. That five is just a little too much for my blood, but since they're four now, we're going to buy two of them, see what we can do. Two anti-aircraft guns for six. That's a total of 14. And then with our other $31, we will be buying 31 militia. <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. All right. Let's go on to our combat moves, of which there are a couple. Starting off over here. We are going to walk one guy into Lapland, four guys into southern Finland, and this tactical bomber, one, two, three, We'll have one move left over after this fight. We are also going to take two subs and a coastal sub from this third army fleet into C zone 14 to raid the uh, Baltic line over here. All right, and those are all of our combat moves. On this side of the planet, dun dun dun! That's right, we're declaring war on the Japanese. We've been biding our time like a snake in the weeds, and it feels like it's time. So, up here in Manchuria, we're gonna walk a motorized into Northern Manchuria, a motorized into Western Manchuria, both from Cheetah. Here into Eastern Manchuria, we have two light armors and a cavalry. Also walking in. And now 
There's this light carrier here that uh, the Japanese got when they declared war on the U.S. but never placed. I'm not sure where it goes. It can only be in either of these two. Either way, I considered attacking it, but I don't think I need to. As the Russians, the carriers aren't going to do me much harm, especially because he has long-range aircraft. He's going to be able to get his planes wherever they need to go. So we're going to take this uh, sub and raid up here in 54. That's on both of the convoy lines. And then this sub uh, that was in 65 will step one space over and raid there in 55. Okay. Those are actually all of our combat moves. Um, I was going to say while we're on this side, we should just do the... Actually, yeah, let's do it. Alrighty, so we've got, we're going to start with this sub right here, uh, because he's only on the one line, and then we'll do this sub second, because he's on both of the lines. You guys know how this works, we've got our thematic die here, you can tell, uh, these are pretty uh, dissimilar, the Soviets have a little bit more texture in there. And look at that, that's a pretty good roll. So we've got uh, four damage there off of the Tokyo line. And now up here in 54, we have a total of six that we can take off with our second sub. And that is five damage there. Um, so I think it has to come off the highest line first. Two, four, five. Uh, so that'll be five IPPs off of this home island line here. Okay, so the Japanese have lost nine dollars in addition to the five the British took off on their last turn. So that's pretty devastating for the Japanese. He's gotten some tough luck on those rolls. We, we rolled three subs against him and got, what, 14 damage? So that's, that's pretty bad. I'm sorry, Dan. Um, so now down here in Manchuria, we are actually going to be liberating these territories in the name of the CCP. They are a part of Chinese home country. So we're going to give these to the CCP and increase their income a little bit. Let's walk over here. Um, that will bring the CCP up to $6 in income thanks to that failed attack by the Americans in Yunnan, which was great for us, I must say. Uh, next up, let's do, uh, yeah, let's do Southern Finland. Nice and easy, I've already got it set up right here. So I'm bringing in four infantry and a tactical bomber. He's got a militia and two infantry in there because of that sneaky lend lease. Little bugger. So let's roll all these out. Okay, looks like we've got one hit a piece. So that's all well and good. We'll take a Russian infantry out and this militia off. And once more. <laughs> Everybody misses. Okay. Let's keep on going. All right. Looks like we've got one hit apiece again. Ouch, this kind of hurts, huh? I probably should have brought some more dudes in, but ugh, I just wanted to start sending them back south. Anyways, we've got two infantry and one tack left versus one infantry. Everybody misses again. 
And our tag finally hits, gosh darn it, and then he will miss as well. So uh, Finland will fall. Forgot to grab my roundels, but we're back. Here we go. Lapland was a walk on. And Southern Finland was not that hurt. Okay. So we'll replace this green chip with a gray. And we now have two infantry in Southern Finland. Um, so I'm gonna roll these convoy raids first and then we'll update the incomes uh, just because we are already over here. <clears throat> All righty. Let's get all these dice out of the way. So we've got two subs and a coastal sub. Let's roll our first fleet submarine. That's two damage. Uh, we can only take off one more, so let's try to get that last one with our second fleet sub. Wow, six to six there. So that will be all three damage off of the Germany line up there in the Baltic. All right, right on. So. Taking a cursory look, I think that is all of our combats. So let's update this income before I forget. The Russians will go up to 56 and the Germans will go down to um, 48. I actually forgot to take three off of the Japanese for Manchuria. And that is how the incomes look now. All right, let's go into our com or our non-combat moves. Uh, now that we're oh, I actually forgot some combat moves. So before we move anything, I'm blowing up some rails, which is a, a combat move. All right, so we're blowing up the two Lithuania rails that go into uh, what is this, Lubelski and Lithuania, respectively. Darn it. We're also blowing up this rail that goes between Lubelski and Latvia. And finally, we're going to blow up this rail between southern Belorussia and Lubelski. Okay, a lot of blown up rails in there. We'll see if it works. I'm trying to stop him from, you know, doing that thing where they're, even though the rail gauge changes, you can... I guess go one space into Russia, even though the gauge changes. So I'm trying to stop that from happening. And that's actually something that's different about V4, which I quite like because it felt weird that he could keep on going. Um, anyways, uh, one housekeeping note that I should have talked about at the beginning of the uh, video. It was actually pointed out to me that this little rail right here is of different gauge. It's just so weird that this little tiny bit is different than that one, but it's like that. And so I actually did that twice. Uh, the first time being this cavalry up in Kiev, which I have left there because, you know, on my last turn, we can say that my last turn's rail movement was me moving that cavalry from uh, Transcaucasia up to Kiev. And then last turn I had railed airborne from Azerbaijan up to Smolensk. I put him back, left the cavalry in Kiev, and then, you know, that's fine for now. This turn's two rail moves will be spent on moving this major factory in Stalingrad down to Transcaucasia. Uh, 
Ooh, that actually makes me think, do I get a tech roll the turn that I move my factory? My gut tells me no, but I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm going to have to, once I finish filming here, I'm going to have to look that up and then I'll probably put an addendum at the end of this video uh, if it ends up being that I should have gotten one less tech roll. Anyways, a major factory down there into Transcaucasia. These two infantry from Transcaucasia are going to walk down into Azure. Azerbaijan. Okay, we've got a fighter from, what is this? Eastern Ukraine. It's gonna go one, two, three, four, also into Azerbaijan. The transport plane from Smolensk is going to fly one, two, three, four down into Transcaucasia. You know what? I'm gonna send him one further into Azerbaijan along with that airborne. Just like that. Okay. Cause I don't, yeah, his transport plane is in Berlin. There's no way he can get to Transcaucasia. I'll have a turn to uh, to mess with all that. Okay. Now up to these uh, moves. Try to get them all in the frame here. Actually, you know what? It's probably better if I just rotate you over here, huh? Excuse the forearm in frame. This is probably fun to watch, huh, guys? Just watch me move the camera around like six times in between actually moving anything. Okay. Uh, this tactical bomb bomber has to land. He's going to go back into, what is that, Karhala. Uh, this infantry and uh, militia from Leningrad are going to walk into northern Belorussia. This cavalry from Estonia is going to walk back into Smolensk. Uh, two infantry in Lithuania are going to walk into Latvia. As well as infantry from Lubelski will walk into Latvia. Okay. Infantry from Kursk and infantry from Smolensk are going to walk into southern Belarusia to join that international brigade. Light armor and the Cossacks from Lubelski will walk into Kursk. Uh, International Brigade from Moscow into Western Russia. Um, this International Brigade that was already in Western Russia is going to walk up to, what is it, Northern Belarus. Two infantry from Karhala will walk into Leningrad. Trying to get everything here, guys. I did these. Fighter from Eastern Ukraine is going to fly, fly into Smolensk. Um, cavalry from Smolensk will walk out to Kursk. Three motorized infantry and two light armor from Eastern Ukraine into Kursk. Three infantry from Southern Ukraine into Kiev, as well as one infantry from Western Ukraine into Kiev. 
that's one, two, three, four infantry, as well as this guy makes five. So we're gonna swap that out for a red chip and there will be a total of six infantry in Kiev. Uh, three moved in from southern Ukraine, one from western Ukraine, and joined the two already there. Which brings us to a total of six. Okay, cavalry from Kiev backing up into Kursk as well. Beautiful. Okay, I think that's all we've got over here. If we flip around, we've got just a couple movements over here. We've got a guy from Central Mongolia into, what is that, Cheetah? And then two infantry from Amur into uh, Vladivostok down here for a total of uh, four infantry. I marked these two international brigades with an orange chip. Uh, they're normal infantry, but I like to keep track of them throughout the game because it's kind of fun. And I ran out of the little uh, roundels. So now I'm marking the international brigades with an orange chip, similar to Hambo. So basically this is a total of six infantry and a militia in Vladivostok now. Okay. Uh, that's it for my non-combat moves. I'm like dreading this place in its face because it's going to be a beast. Um, but it's time. Okay, well, let's do it. I'm going to start off with the easy things first. We have International Brigade into Moscow. I missed um, improved factories again, which is a bummer. So we're gonna put an anti-aircraft gun in Smolensk and an anti-aircraft gun into uh, Kiev down there. Our two tank destroyers will go into Kursk. Um, so I'm gonna count this off for you guys. One, two, three motorized. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven light armor, two tank destroyers, two cavalry, and the Cossacks are all in uh, Kursk there. Kiev has six infantry and an anti aircraft gun. Uh, Southern Belarusia has three infantry, uh, technically two infantry and an international brigade down there. Uh, Northern Belarusia has a militia, infantry, international brigade. Latvia has three infantry, Leningrad has two infantry, Smolensk has two anti-aircraft guns and a fighter. Okay, now let's start placing these militia. We've got 31 of them. I think I've got it uh, counted out right where I want to put them all. But just in case I don't, I'm going to go down um, from highest priority to lowest priority. So one, two into Leningrad. Oops. Two into Leningrad. One into Northern Belarusia. One into Smolensk. That's a total of four. One into Southern Belarusia, that's five. One into Lithuania, that's six. One into Lubelski, that's seven. One into Eastern Poland, that's eight. I'm gonna put one in Western Ukraine and one in Southern Ukraine, that's nine and 10. We've got 11, 12, and 13 going into Kiev. Uh, 
um, 14 and 15 into Tarita. Oops. 16 into Crimea. All right, um, 17 and 18 into Kursk. Okay, we're at 18. Uh, we're gonna put one, uh, 19 down here into Southern Iran. So that's 19. We're gonna flip over here. We've got 20 and 21 going into uh, Vladivostok. So I put 19 into Southern Iran, 2021 20, into Vladivostok, 22 into Amur, 23 into Magadan, 24 into Yakutsk, 25 into Chita, 26 into Buryatia, you can't see that. That's 26, 27 into Irkutsk, 27. and I've got three more, aha, okay, sorry, it's spinning it around. Of our last three, one will go into Western Russia because I forgot that. And these last two guys. Um, let's see here. Where was I going to put these last two? Gosh, guys. Let's put the last two into Transcaucasia down here. Ooh, 31. Okay. That's it for place units. Now we've got... So collect income comes very last. I'm gonna have to check my work at the end because I'm pretty sure I factored, factored this one into my standing count over there. I'm not gonna recount on video, but um, I'm gonna check my work and then make an addendum if I mess anything up there. So collecting income comes last. So now we are going to um, do our roles for CCP. Now, uh, this is something else I've been scared of. So the CCP now has five possessed territories. We saved our $2. We're going to spend those two to increase our influence role to seven. So we need a seven or less to influence the northeastern warlord there in Peking and by golly I hoping and praying that we get it oh let's go look at that that's a three guys the relief is palpable I kind of risked it all on this by not buying another militia Whew. I need I could have bought the militia honestly but wowzers okay We have influenced the Northeastern Warlord, thanks to our great friends, the Soviets. So 
So now we have three infantry in Nanking, <clears throat> a militia in Hope, two infantry, a cavalry, and two militia in Suiwan. And that warlord is worth five IPPs, which will bring the CCP up to be in line with the Italians at 10. Okay, now we can do our recruitment roll, which is now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight or less to hit our recruitment roll. And there's a four, so we can get either an infantry or two militia. Uh, so what I'm going to do is Okay, so I'm going to add two militia to ah, crap. I'm going to add an infantry to Yunnan. I was so caught up in hitting the uh, in hitting the influence roll. I didn't even think about what I'd do if I hit the recruitment roll. You know, let's actually put an infantry into Holy cow, guys, I'm sorry. You can, holy crap. Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna make up my mind. We're gonna put two militia into Yunnan. Sorry that took so long, I was completely unprepared for that and I should have been prepared okay that's it for the CCP we're feeling good feeling just peachy actually I need to put you right here well no we've got one more dice roll sorry guys I'm getting flustered here at the end we've got one more die roll we're gonna do our wartime economy for the Russians Okay, well, so the Soviets are at a base of 56. We get three for our war pop propaganda um, national objective. And we get two for wartime economy, which puts us at 61. Okay, 61 for the Soviets. The CCP are at a base of 10, and we get two for being adjacent to the Soviets now. Which puts us up to a total of 12 for the CCP. That feels good. Okay, guys. Uh, I believe that is it for the Soviet turn. And this has been a long one, so I'm going to sign off now, and I will see you guys. Uh, next time, check out Madman Dan for Japan. All right, guys, a very short addendum here at the end to correct the two mistakes that I actually somehow caught during the filming of the video. Uh, the first is that this factory does not get a tech roll this turn, so we are going to uh, remove improved construction. It was the furthest back, so uh, that's probably the one that I wouldn't have rolled for. And obviously I told you guys pretty blatantly that I want to improve factories the most. So uh, we're going to leave that miss in there, obviously. Uh, next is I was one militia short in my placement phase. Um, so we're going to put that last guy out here in Kamchatka. Okay, for real this time, goodbye, and I will see you guys next time.